Traffic Jam is on now. Hey, it's Michael Callier, and you're watching the Traffic Jam. Hit the brakes. Because you were part of history. As far as that was the second thing, as far as you're part of history, because that was the first black animated Disney movie that you lend your voice to. It was Buford, right? The character was Buford. Yeah, what's the name of the movie? Princess and the Frog. Okay, just trying to make sure you did a little bit of reading. <laughs> I did my research. I did yeah, my research. And, frog, and it is a magical movie. I, I, every black person can see it. But black or white, it is a magical, powerful, well put together film with great actors, Anika Nali Rose, Oprah Winfrey, so many great artists are in there, Keith David, you know. And for me, it's my third animated film. You know, but it's very important. I'm sorry, I'm trying to heat my coffee up. But it was, it's a very important film. Like you say, it's historical. And I thought it was hysterical. And you mentioned my character. Ah, here he is. My character was Buford. Wow. Now, yeah, how was, Buford how was, was like that? <laughs> how, when you're doing these voiceovers, so you're in this, you're, you're, Disney brings you into a studio. You're not interacting with the other uh, voiceover actors, you're just in the right. studio playing your lines. So how right. does that whole process go? Well, you know, it's real cool. They put you in the studio and they have a script. You know, they have a script. Actually, the first day was so magical to go there. And when I went just to go sign the contracts and you go into Disney, and I don't know if you've ever been to the Disney studio. They mm -hmm. have a studio in Hollywood, North Hollywood. And the, the building is made like the wizard's hat in this movie that Mickey Mouse was in where he played a wizard. So you walk into a building, it looks like a wizard's hat. And in California, most people don't have basements. You don't really want to have a basement in a town that has earthquakes. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> you go in and get in an elevator and go deep underground. And then the doors open and you're in these huge corridors. And on each side of the walls are all these magnificent children cartoons you grew up on the original wow. works are on the wall and you just get goosebumps on top of goosebumps and then after you sign your contract they come and show you the picture of you you sitting there and they go well okay now this is this is your character right here you're Buford you know so Buford you know I was the cook I was like yeah you're gonna get your own restaurant and I'm gonna win the Kentucky Derby right and I start galloping around slapping my behind with a spatula why you heard the, the music playing from the Kentucky Derby. So what they do is they just give you the script. Uh, they put the script up on a stand. You put your headset on. You go in a booth. And then the other room is a director and a sound mixer. And then you do your line, each line, at least three to four times. Because you want to do it different ways until they see how it feels. What okay. feels right. And you know what the story is. So you know what's happened up until when your line comes. Now here come your line. So how do you say it? You know? Like it's like, uh, uh, yeah, you gonna win. You gonna get your own restaurant, and I'm gonna win the Kentucky Derby. Like, hey, you gonna get your own restaurant, and, and yeah, I'm gonna win the Kentucky Derby. You know, it's just like you just do all these different variations of the same line, and okay. some of them they just hit with the direction. That that's it. We're gonna go with that one. Or you do three or four, and they say, okay, we're good. Let's go to the next ones. And then later they fool around. They fool around with the lines until they figure out. Uh, what's the best ones that fit in? Then they just they just put them in like a puzzle. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You never even okay. see the other actors. You know, okay. none of them even come on the same day. They all come on different days, do their stuff. You do your stuff. They mix and match it, and then they lay it all out. Yeah. Now, now this has always been amazing to me, and it's, it's two. You're the second person that I've seen that capitalized on this, but you have really put a mark on it as far as doing comedy outside where you're the king of Venice Beach, out, like what I, the other person I'm referenced to is Charlie, Mer um, no, um, is Charlie Burnett. Charlie Burnett. <laughs> I was waiting to see if you got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Charlie Burnett. Yeah, actually, actually friend, man. Dave Chappelle mentored on the uh, Charlie, um, uh, no. Charlie Burnett as far as like doing in Thompson Park. You was out in Venice Beach. But I think he did so Washington Square Park in New York. I think he did Washington Square Park in New York. And Thompson, Thompson, he did I, I, Thompson. I never heard of Thompson, so he may have done it. He may have yeah. done it. But yeah. what I would say is so amazing as far as for you, one, doing outdoors, and you're from Chicago. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So here it is. You're the king of Venice Beach in L.A. What made you do these five one hour shows for nine years in Venice, Venice Beach? Well, I came to figure out that formula, you know, what I mean, because I did start in my home in Chicago mm-hmm. and I started in the summer. But then winter came and wasn't nobody trying to hit no jokes on State Street in December in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to figure out how could I do it year round. And the initial plan was to go to San Francisco because okay. it was just clear to all street performers that that's the street performance haven is San Francisco. The police don't bother you. You can street perform anywhere you want, whenever you want to. And the famous Fisherman's Wharf is where everybody went. People get rich on Fisherman's Wharf. So that's okay. where I was going initially, you know. Uh, but on the way there, I came to L.A., and I met the woman who's soon to be my wife uh, now, ex-wife. But anyway, uh, I met her on the way there. And then I went on to uh, to Fishman Wharf to do my business, to do my work there. But it wasn't as lucrative as I thought it would be. And it was February. And February is cold as shit in San Francisco. I didn't know that. I thought yeah. California was going to be warm all year round. They had seals in the water. That's how cold it was. So I'm standing out there performing on the boardwalk i was doing okay uh, i'm making some little cheese you're watching the traffic jam um i passed out on the boardwalk and i got up and drove myself to the hospital and when i got there they said oh you have stomach flu i got in it from being out there on what well by now my girlfriend was calling me and saying well come on back down here i just bought a new condo you come and hang out and stay with me and they got a place down here called Venice beach and when I found Venice Beach, brother, I had found heaven, man. It was all stuff I needed. It was a boardwalk with any given day, three to 500,000 people walk up and down Venice Beach. So it was just money to be made, you know? Yeah. So all I had to do was create a system. So I, I used to do it every day, you know, six, seven days a week. It was grueling. It was killing me. And I also realized the money ain't there. The money was only there during the weekend. So really just Saturday and Sunday was the money. And I sit up at I sit up at 10 in the morning because the money got there around 12. So I go from 12 to 5. Because after 5 o'clock, the white folks leave and take their money. And the brothers, the Hispanic brothers, they both come down and they got an attitude and pistols. So it's yeah. time to get out of there. So on that little five-hour block is when I would do my stuff. But brothers, Hispanic brothers, everybody would come to my show. And everybody would pay, white, black, young, old. It didn't matter. They loved the show. They loved the energy of it. They wanted to participate in it, you know? So that's what made me formulate that. It took me a while to figure it out. But once I figured out that that was the formula, then that was a winning formula that I could do year after year. So let me ask you this before we run out of time with my 14 people. We've been um, out of time. Boy, yeah, my yeah, I told yeah, 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> when you receive your lifetime achievement award. You got to bring it out into uh, mm-hmm. the spirit, man. Of mm-hmm. all your, your your body of work, what are the what are the top five? Like Chris Rock has this, uh, your top five. What is the top five that you would want as far as your legacy that people to pinpoint and look at um, and go, this these are the body of work. These are the highlights of Michael Kahn. First would be Yolani Rain Dawson. Mm-hmm. That is my daughter. She is 25 and she is everything. Mm-hmm. She is so blessed and so wonderful and beautiful. And do you know that I have a new movie out? No. Okay, now you got to get out the mustard and catch up. <laughs> All right. I have a movie out, brother, that's a major hit on BET. It's called Holiday Heartbreak. Yes, you know what? So I'm, I'm just really playing with you, and um, you in no, there Negro, with you didn't comedian. remember. No, 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 you're in there with Country Wayne, and it's actually mm-hmm. doing... Country Wayne is in there with me. Yeah, I'm so the star. I apologize. The I right, apologize. All right, you did a fabulous job in there. I was just playing around with you. I've act. I actually seen it uh, two days ago. Right. You actually saw the movie? Yes. All right. Then say what? What was my best scene? We're going to find out right now. Don't come on here lying either, because all 15 of these people will hang up on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, as a comedian, but I like when comedians get to the dramatic parts. So the whole thing, when you had to go 
to each of these women and actually make a, a, an apology to all the things that you did. Those moments were Michael Cott. So like I like each one stop each stop off that led off to your whole confrontation with um with uh country Wayne. Wayne. Yes, but those those scenes, that's what's always, I think, would always roll throughout your and career. you saw the whole movie. Yeah, yes. Tell but we ain't finished. We because we run out of time. You, tell the truth. Did you see the whole movie? Halfway to the whole thing. <laughs> okay, all right. Because the best scene is not that. The best scene is when I'm in the cemetery apologizing okay. to my dead wife. Yes, that's what that's, 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 that's towards the end. Movie. That's towards the end. Yes. That's, that's, that's you made the, it to that part. End. Huh? You made it to that part? Yes. That's what okay. I was saying. That, right. was, that was that's what that was I was talking about. You made amends mm -hmm. at the and it was like, you know what it was? It was like Christmas past. It was like you see Christmas presents, it was like the school mm -hmm. movie all over again. So you oh, said you know it is kind of weird that scene. Yeah. I so can those, see that. Okay, your your daughter, your but new wait, movie. I want to tell you why I'm saying this. Because in this movie, it's all about me saving my daughter. Yes. So I was able to use my own daughter as a substitute to think about when I'm talking to this young lady. Oh, okay. And what's so impressive about this movie and magical about this movie is first of all, you don't see responsible black dads in films anymore. You know, black films, everybody coming in, they're gonna smoke some weed. Uh, they're gonna be cheating on people. At the end, um, they gonna everybody can get together and do the line dance. We can do electric slide and you know, but. This movie is about a black man who loves his daughter so much that he's going to do whatever he needs to do to save her from that fool, country wing, but really to save her from the spell that that uh, Lisa Ray put on her, you yeah. know? And, you know, Lisa Ray plays the voodoo witch to put the spell on her. My wife is played by A.J. Johnson from uh, Baby Boy and House Party. Country Wayne is brilliant. Yes. That boy can say anything, and it's hilarious. So... So I just mentioned that because of her. So first of all, she's first. First thing is she's the greatest accomplishment I've ever had. It's, it's her. Secondly, um, in as far as industry stuff, this movie was the most magical thing that ever happened to me. Because I've been in this business 34 years. I've done 40 films. I've done a dozen, two dozen television shows. Uh, I did Def Jam the first season. They liked it so much. It brought me back for four more seasons. I co-created Comic View. I've been around this game now 34 years doing this, but this is the first time that I am number one on the call sheet. Yes. The first time that I am the star of the movie and they also made me a producer and the experience of carrying an entire movie, of knowing these lines and being able to do them convincingly. So I'm not just the guy who's trying to be the funny comedian, jumping in and say a funny thing here. That I have to carry that whole story where anybody can play off me. So that's like one of my greatest accomplishments. Of course, Star Search is way up there. Probably number three is Star Search because I won that for the 100000 And the, the big thing about that wasn't just winning the money. It was that I was able to give half to the homeless. Yes. And that, for me, always resonates love. I mean, Christmas Day, we're going to be out there giving out blankets and things to the homeless. I'm going to ask you and your partner to put something in my cash out because mm -hmm. we ask people today because we, we need the money by tomorrow. Let me show you my cash out. Any, any of your people watching and my cash out. Dollar sign, Michael Cowyer's money. See, I try to make it easy. That's uh -huh. Michael Cowyer's money y'all got in your bank. I, I like to make it easy for other people to give me their money. But what we're doing tomorrow, me and my producing partner, uh, Malika Blessing, she has a company called Royal Blessings Entertainment. Entertainment. Her company and my company are raising funds and we're going to buy fresh new blankets, socks, hygiene, hygiene uh, equipment and sandwiches and make packages of food. And we're going out Christmas morning, brother, and we're going to try to feed as many people as we can, give blankets to many people. So I did it on my morning show today. Mm -hmm. And I announced it. And so far, we're up to $700 that these people gave 50, 20, 100, 10. So we're just trying to do that for the folks because that's my thing is giving back to the homeless, right? So that was number three for me. So bag it up. Number one, my awesome daughter, Yulani, who could sing her ass up. I'm telling y'all, go to Yulani, U-L-A-N-I, Yulani for the soul and watch the child sing. 
She's she's and she loves God and she's sweet and she just anyway she's amazing she's amazing. Secondly, uh, the movie uh, Holly, Holiday Heartbreak. If y'all haven't seen it, it runs again Wednesday, twice on Christmas, which is Friday, and then again on twenty eighth. You got four more opportunities to miss me. Okay, and then third will be the Star uh, Star Search. Fourth would be writing my books. You know, I, I've written three books now. But my third is my favorite. It's called Michael Goes Motivational. So it's motivational speaking from a comedic point of view. You know, I didn't know we was going to talk about all this because I would have all my books and stuff laid out ready for you. Um, and I have to say probably, you know, I've acted in a lot of things. I really love being on a Martin show. You know, so I would have to say the Martin show. Some people don't think this, it should be the other order. The Martin show and then House Party 3. But some people don't think I should say House Party 3 first. But the Martin set was the most professional and the most fun set I'd ever been on. But House Party 3 has created a legacy, uh, has created, I'm sorry, as people trying to call in. House Party 3 has, has created a legacy for me. No matter where I go, that movie's 25 years old. People walk up to me like they just saw it yesterday yeah. and they could quote lines and stuff. And I mean, every day somebody talks about that. And those are the five next to Venice Beach. Venice Beach was the most important accomplishment. To be out there for nine years, five hours a day, making about six figures a year. Only weekends working, telling jokes and passing my hat. Nothing will ever touch that because that defined me as a human being. It crafted me. It made me understand the importance of helping homeless people and other people and that the world's not about me. Because I went to California to be a millionaire, but I got there and discovered my brother. And when I realized the world's not about me, it's about me finding you. Hey, brother. Thank you, man, for your time, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming on this show, Traffic Jam. You're watching The Traffic Jam. If y'all want to find me, just go to Instagram and put in Michael Collier, C-O-L-Y-A-R. Or you can write me at comicking123 at AOL. Dot com, or you can follow my morning show, which is on YouTube. You go to YouTube and you go to the search bar and you put in the Michael Callier morning show, C O L Y A R C O L Y A R. You're watching the traffic jam. Second abs exercise reverse crunch. It's much better for women to do reverse crunch, just for especially for those who already have babies. You have to make sure. Uh, uh, the hum of the whole actually your organ, you don't push down because you don't breathe properly. So let's go to the back here. Men, you can do as much uh, whatever, uh, whatever you like, what variation. For women, you have this angle. Your back is completely flat on the mat. You bring up and you relax. You can just bring here your heels and go very slow. And there is many variations. This is one. You can also have it's spreading your leg. You can have here and just up in here. But always remember to flatten your back. You're watching the Traffic Jam. You know, ladies, men are like dogs. They'll protect you, they'll cuddle you, give you all type of affection, but they need treats. And for men, treats are compliments, reassurance. You ever notice when an athlete or an actor receives an award, there's three people they acknowledge. God, and you ain't competing with God. Their mother and a mentor, or a coach or a director. Because these people give them reassurance. You know, it's, you can't always keep on beating up. I got a lady... 
that reached out to me and she, she says, I, I, I love my man. He's a great husband, great father. Just, I don't seem like he's going after his goals and, and has any ambition. You gotta give him those, those, and, and what I mean by it, this is why side chicks and prostitutes are winning because they play to the man's ego. And I'm not saying play, sincerely say, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. I appreciate you being in my life. And sometimes it has to be a stern. It, it, it's, it's like, you can do better. You, you ain't working hard enough. And I know you're capable of. Those mean something. So reach out to your man and say to him, my last man knew what he wanted. You're going to see some motivation. You're going to see some action. Michael Callier, and you're watching The Traffic Jam. Hit the brakes.